Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter to everyone. Today, Minister Curtis Jones coming to you on this Easter morning. God bless each and every one of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you just put your hands together and let's give God some praise and thanks. Hallelujah. For this Easter Sunday. Amen. Oh God, we give you praise. We thank you. Hallelujah. For a glorious day. And on behalf of Second Chance Overcomers Ministry and my wife, amen, we just rejoicing today. Hallelujah, because of how good God is and all that he did for us when he gave Jesus to come and die for us. Amen. We acknowledge what the Lord did for us on the cross and showing his love and reconciling us back to God at Calvary's cross. And today I just want to touch on I'll touch up on a few things, amen. I want to take you back in the scriptures, uh, the time when Jesus had resurrected and uh, he appeared unto the disciples. Uh, the disciples was assembled together in a room and he appeared right before their presence and uh, they saw him, you know, and uh, it was amazing to them to have seen Jesus after he had resurrected and all and uh, he showed them the prints in his hands and, and the, in his side and all and they rejoiced. I remember uh, Jesus told them, said that uh, before he died on the cross, he was talking with them. He told them, he said, he said that I go away and where I go, you cannot go, you know, and sorrow has filled your heart, you know, at this point. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And when he made that uh, comment to them, he was making reference how once they've seen him after he had resurrected, their sorrow, because it was a sad thing for them to witness that, that his dying and all the way he died and what have you, it was very sad, it was devastating to them. You know, and so when he uh, showed himself to them after he had resurrected, joy filled their hearts. They was joyful, that, you know, to have seen him uh, raised from the dead, amen. But you know, here's the thing about that before I say any more about this subject is that they shouldn't have doubted him because they had seen Jesus do all kinds of miracles, you know, uh, how he raised uh, 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 Lazarus from the dead, you know, and uh, Jesus just did so, walked on the waters, calmed the storms and all the things that Jesus did, cursed the fig tree and the fig tree withered away, opened the eyes of the blind and, and all the miracles that he did before them, cast out the devils that was in legion, you know, and make them go into the swine and what have you. And they ran uh, violently down into the stream and they all drowned. All the miracles that they seen him do, they shouldn't have doubted him, you know, because everything he ever told them, uh, he brought it to pass. Amen. He did what he said he would do. But nevertheless, you know, I guess because of fear and they was human, you know, that they was afraid of their lives, first of all, and that's the reason they was hiding. And also, you know, because of the devastation of the way Christ was crucified and the way they, you know, what, what he went through, it just really blew their minds, you know, and to think of that, that he can come back from that. It, it was hard. It was real hard, you know, but nevertheless, uh, sure enough, Jesus appeared unto them. And uh, when they saw him, they rejoiced and all, uh, you know, and uh, Thomas wasn't there. That's what I'm getting at. He wasn't there. Uh, many people called him Doubting Thomas, you know. So um, uh, after uh, Jesus left and uh, Thomas came back, they told Thomas, said, we've seen the master. We've seen him. And uh, like I said, it was so devastating to all of them that Thomas was like, wow, you know, <laughs> oh, no. He said, you know, unless I can take my hand and thrust it in the place in his hand and feel the prince. And take my hand and thrust it in his side where he was pierced. I will not believe. You know, Thomas, he just had a hard time believing even when they told him that we've seen the master. And sure enough, Jesus, once again, he appeared right in their midst. You know, uh, awesome thing. He just showed up. Hallelujah. In his glorified body. And when uh, Thomas saw him, Jesus said, Thomas, reach heaven. Feel the place in my hands and feel the print in my side. Thrust your hand in my side. For a spirit has not flesh and bone as ye see me have. And Thomas, after Thomas felt, felt the place in his hands and all, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus told Thomas, said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. But blessed are they that believe and have not seen. And that brings you and I into the equation. We are the ones that are considered to be the blessed ones because we believe by faith, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ has been resurrected. He have risen. Amen. He has risen and he's on the right hand of God. Now, we wasn't there to see him when he ascended back into the heaven, but the scriptures let us know that when they was all standing together, 
and, and all on the mount that Jesus, uh, he began to go up into the heavens. And he told them, he said, go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. And as he went up into the heavens, the disciple was standing there watching it. And the angels spoke unto him, say, ye men of Galilee, say, why stand you gazing up into the air? For this same Jesus, hallelujah, not another one, but this same Jesus. And in like manner that you see him leaving, he shall return again. And that reminds me of Thessalonians when Paul picked it up and Paul said, said, for the Lord himself shall descend, meaning to come down. The opposite of ascension is descent, descending. He shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the trump of God. Hallelujah. And with the, uh, the voice of the archangel. And then Paul said, and the dead in Christ, they will rise first. Then all of we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, talking about the body of Christ, together with the dead, with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. So once again, I'd like to say to you, let's not be like Thomas. Let's not doubt Jesus. He promised that he would come again. Paul picked it up and said that he would. In Thessalonians, he told us in the manner in which Jesus will come. Paul said, behold, I show you a great mystery. For we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed at the last trump, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So when he come, he will come as a thief in the night. Hallelujah. We have to be watchful and we have to be watching and ready for our Jesus to come. Like I said on my teaching on yesterday, he can come on today. He can come before this afternoon is over with. He can come before tonight comes. We, will you be ready? Amen. When Jesus come. And God tells us, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world, you know, these things are temporal, but seek ye your treasures. Hallelujah. Where the thief cannot get in and, and, and steal and the moth doesn't corrupt. Where our hearts are, that's where our treasures are. Hallelujah. Yes, we should be heavenly minded. Amen. But at the same time, we need to be earthly good. Not the opposite of earthly good. Some people have said, well, you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Oh, we can make, make, we can make good in the earth and still be heavenly minded. We represent why we're here in this earth. Because there's a lot of people that are still in darkness and they does not know about the light. They have not seen or experienced the light. We are the salt of the earth, the word of God says. Hallelujah. A city that sets on the hill. Hallelujah. So we represent the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We that are been, we that are saved that have the spirit of God in us. Hallelujah. We represent Jesus in the earth. Hallelujah. They don't know him. They don't know the word. They don't have the faith in that, the, the man, Jesus Christ, like we do. So when they see us, they should see us as representatives of Jesus, showing the love of God, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, letting people know that God loved them. That you can be forgiven. And that's what I'm saying on this day. I'm speaking to whoever that's watching. Always remember that God loves you. Doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you have materially. It doesn't matter what the state of your, your physical health is. You know, it doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter how much you got or how much you don't have. God still loves you because he proved that when he sent Jesus here to die for your sins. That's the key thing, is to be saved from sin. You know, you can have a billion, a million, a trillion dollars, and if you're still in your sins, you still are not free. You are not free. You, Everybody, everyone need Jesus Christ. We need him. We need a savior. We need the helper. We need the Holy Spirit inside of us to help us to live for God. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. They that worship him must do it in spirit and in truth. You know, no man has ever seen God, hallelujah, except the Son. So we have to trust and believe in him to know that Jesus Christ have came to reconcile us back to the Father. Hallelujah. And so we can serve God by spirit. They that worship God must do it in spirit and in truth. They that are led by the spirit are the sons of God. Who He that hath not the spirit is none of his. It is important that we have the spirit of God inside of us. I remember Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, ye must be born again. For that which is born of the flesh is simply flesh. 
but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Is it, is it, it is an expedient unto you, man, woman, sir, ma'am, that you be born again. Hallelujah. Even though we was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and in our womb, uh, our mother's womb, she con uh, that's the way she conceived us. But we don't have to die in sin, in our sins. We don't have to die a sinner. Amen. God has made a way so we can be saved and, and set free from that life of sin. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how bound that you are. Or no, doesn't matter what's going on in your life today. You can be set free, but you got to believe. This whole thing is about faith. Believe in God. Believe in there is a God. The word of God said, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is God and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You got to seek him by faith. If you don't believe in him, you're not going to waste your time trying to seek for him. But the word of God is here for us. As we minister the word to you and we share the gospel with you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your faith increases as you begin to hear the truth because God's word is truth. Hallelujah without error. And we speak the truth to you. We let you know that you can be saved from the life of sin. You can be set free. Amen. Jesus Christ have already paid the price for your sins and he's sitting, he's waiting for you. He said, behold, hallelujah. I stand at the door and knock. Let any man hear my voice and open. I will come in and sup with him and him with me. And he said, cast all your cares upon me. For I care for you. Hallelujah. You know, he's waiting. Whoever you are, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah. This is another opportunity God has given you to give your life to Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful time to be saved. I mean, every day is a great time to be saved if you didn't get saved yesterday. But this is Easter Sunday. You know, this is a good way you can just keep track and say, you know, I gave my life to Jesus on the day of Easter in 2022. I gave my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's easy for you to remember. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear God speaking to you today. Harden not your heart. Aren't you tired of drinking and cussing and stealing and lying and cheating and fornicating and committing adultery? Aren't you tired of that life? It's like a spider web. You get entangled, you get caught in that life. And it seems like you're struggling and you can't get out. You know why? Because there is an adversary called the devil. And the scripture said he walks as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He have you trapped. He had me trapped. And once you come in this world, he traps you in that life of sin. And you will live your entire life that way unless you call on Jesus. Unless you call on the name of Jesus. As the word says, whosoever call on the name of the Lord will be saved. I, I encourage you today, call on Jesus. If you are down and you, you're just at a place, a low place in your life, and you're, you, you're not happy, you're miserable, and your, your, your relationship in your family, in your home, seems like nothing is going right. On your job, you just got all kind of issues going on in your life. Call on Jesus. He'll hear you if you mean it from your heart. Call on him in faith, believing that, yes, Jesus, I need you, Lord. I need you. I know you see me, God. I know you see what I'm going through. Have mercy on me, Lord. Talk to him. I'm encouraging you today. Whoever you are, call on God. He's waiting for you. It's not an accident or happenstance that we're speaking this word to you today, sir, ma'am. God knows what he's doing. You need to hear somebody encouraging you, coaching you, giving you that push that you need to go ahead and turn it all over to Jesus. Stop wrestling with the devil, if you will. Stop wallowing in your sins, if you will. It's time to come out before it's too late. As, as we said earlier, the Lord will come back for his bride, his church, as a thief in the night. You're not going to know when he's going to come back. It's going to be quick. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you got to be already saved. Why risk eternity losing your soul and suffering and going to a place called hell, which is not the final death according to Revelation, but the final death is the lake of fire and brimstone. John the Revelator said, I saw hell. Hell was cast into the lake. So every man going to be judged. There's going to be a judgment day. When we all will stand, 
uh, the, the sinners, the unrighteous, the ungodly will stand before uh, the, the, the white throne judgment. And then you have the judgment seat of Christ. But you don't want to be one of them that stand before God and your name has not been written in the Lamb Book of Life. It is important to be saved so your name would be written in Jesus' Lamb Book of Life. That's important. I remember uh, the disciples were rejoicing because they cast out a few devils here and there. And Jesus said, rejoice not because the devils are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names have been written in the Lamb Book of Life. That's important, people of God. When you get saved, it's recorded down in the Lamb Book that you've given your life to Jesus. That's the reason I made mention about getting saved on the day, which is Easter Sunday. Oh, they'll put that down. 2022, hallelujah, in the month of April. Susie, John, Billy, Jane, Miss, Miss Jenkins, and Mr. Johnson gave his life to Jesus on Easter Sunday. Oh, that would be so awesome. You stand before God on Judgment Day and the books are open and God look in there and see that you gave your life to his son. You repented of your sin and you accepted, you asked Jesus, you invited Jesus to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. You did that. He look and see that in April 2022, you gave your life to his son. You repent of your sin. He writes your name down on today. That's an awesome thing. Nothing in this life that you have already achieved and you can achieve will outweigh that. I don't care if you got four degrees, five degrees in whatever. It doesn't matter if you graduated, you won, won gold medals in the Olympics. It doesn't matter if you won the lottery. It doesn't matter if you are a millionaire, trillionaire, billionaire. None of those things can compare to your name being written in the Lamb Book of Life. That is the ultimate goal. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus came and died. That you will be saved that you will be set free from a life of sin so you won't have to give account for the things that you've done wrong since you've been on this earth. There's a scripture that says every idle word that men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. It says everything that we've done in our bodies, we will give account of it in the day of judgment. The eyes of the Lord is in every place beholding that which is good and evil. Amen. So we cannot over omit and overlook the fact that God has already made a way so we can be saved and set free. Hallelujah. So, as we continue to minister, amen, just believe that the word which we speak to you are words of truth. Hallelujah. Words of truth. And so, God wants you to hear his word because that's what is going to change your life, the word of God. Hallelujah. God's word is sharp. It's sharp now. It gets down where it needs to get, you know, and it penetrates your very heart and spirit. It gets all down into the marrows of your bone. The word of God is sharp and it's quick. Hallelujah. It's powerful as a two-edged sword. Amen. And sometimes it hurts. Amen. When you have to just face up to the fact that I need to change. I need to stop being the way I've been all of my life. And for you, many of you, you need to take a good inventory of your life, of yourself. Think about what you've already been like. And that we, we entered into a pandemic two years ago. The whole world seemed like it was changed as a result of it. Many, many people died by the thousands. You're still here. It's not by accident that you didn't die from the coronavirus. You're still here. God is keeping you here for a reason. If you still a drunkard, if you still a whoremonger, if you still a liar or a cusser, a club goer, a party person, if you still a cheater, whatever you're doing wrong, you're doing wrong. If you're still alive to this day, God is keeping you here for a reason. I believe one of those reasons is because if he would take you right now, the way you are, your soul would immediately be lost and you will spend eternity in hell, according to the scriptures. The word of God said to be absent from the body speaking to the believers is to be present with the Lord. Okay. But now as the word also said, it has been appointed unto man once to die and after this, the judgment. So if you die a sinner, you're going to go right into judgment. You will be judged for the life that you have lived as a sinner. And ultimately there is a day called judgment day. 
We're preaching truth to you. This is not some make-believe stuff that we're saying. We're speaking this to you because of love, the love of Christ that is in me. He saved me. He got me out. And anytime you love someone, you will reach your hand out to them and you will try to pull them out. It reminds you of a scenario of somebody drowning. You know, you get out of the water and now you reach, you get in the boat, okay, to safety. And then your friend or whoever, they're drowning and you reach in and you try to pull them out too. So they would be free. And this is what it's all about. He saved me. He saved me. He rescued me. And now that I'm out, hallelujah, we're reaching out to you. We're reaching out. We're trying to just do all we can do by the spirit of God is in me to help you to come out. It's time. It's time for you to come out of your sins. Yes, yes. Now is the day and accept a time, acceptable time for salvation. God loves you enough to speak through this minister today to let you know Easter Sunday morning, this is a good time to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is a good day. Go to church of your choice. Find your place to go and worship. Get into the house of God. Sit up under the word of God. Allow God to speak to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, sir, ma'am. You may not even have planned to go to church today. But I encourage you, go. If you got something nice, put on something nice. Go ahead. If you don't, put on what you got. But by all means, get in your car, just like you go to the grocery store, just like you get up in the morning tomorrow and you're going to go to work. Get in your car. Go to the church of your choice. Get in the house of God. Because I'm sure the word of God is going for. They will be ministering and preaching and teaching the word of God on today. Get in there. Hallelujah. Start off afresh. So you can receive God's word and hear the word of God spoken to you. Hallelujah. We love you. We care about you. Yes. This is not religion that we're speaking here. This is love. The love of God, as the word tells us, is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit in me, he's speaking love to you because he cares more about you than this fleshly man. I'm just a man, but the Holy Spirit is God. He understand how much God loves you. And he's speaking the word to you today, sir, ma'am, young lady, young man, repent, give your life to Jesus, go to church, hear the word of God, turn away from the life of sin, throw in the towel. Give it up. You're struggling. There's no good ending to that life. Jesus Christ have came and he've offered us eternal life, a better life. Death, you doesn't know when it may come, how it may come, and who in your family it will come to. You does, you does not know. So you want to be prepared for that time, when it come, how it come. So your soul will be saved should that happen to you. And God is keeping you alive. He's keeping you alive because he's given you another chance to get things right with him. That's why you have not died. Some of you may have had car accidents and all kinds of things that may have threatened your life, life over the year, lives over the years. And you look at it and say, man, how in the world did I make it out of that? Some of you may have been in situations where your home caught a fire, whatever, and you survive and all kinds of things you have experienced. Some of you might have been swimming on the beach or whatever and came close to drown or in the pool. You know, I know that this word is going forth to somebody and you survived it. How in the world were you able to survive those things? It wasn't nothing that you did, sir, ma'am. It was the grace of God that kept you alive, and it is still God's grace that's keeping you alive. God do not want to see you die a sinner and end up in hell for eternity. There's a scripture that bags up what I just said. The word of God says God is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any would perish. You hear that? But that all would come to repentance. He's long-suffering. That's the reason why you're still alive today, even though you may have committed all those sins in, all, in your entire life, even to this day. You may be 30, 35, 40, 50, 20, 28, 60, 70 years old. You're still alive. You still ain't saved. You're still a sinner. And, but, you know, why am I still living? Because God is still giving you a chance to turn your life over 
to his son, Jesus, to keep you out of a burning hell. That's the message. You've heard it. We've spoken it. I'm bringing it in. I'm closing. Once again, we say happy Easter to you. Remember, Easter is not about a bunny rabbit and some eggs. That's mainly for the children to enjoy Easter, okay? Us grown folks, we know we beyond that. Easter is about Jesus Christ dying on the cross and God raising him from the dead three days later for our sins. That's what Easter is about. Know that Jesus came into this world to become our Lord and our Savior, that all men would be saved through him. Yes, that's what Easter is about. So, as we close, God bless you. I hope that the word fall on good ground and have fell on good grounds that you have received this message and that you today will receive Jesus Christ and accept him into your life as your Lord and Savior. This has been Minister Curtis Jones on behalf of Second Chance Overcomers Ministry. God bless you. Remember, we serve a God of a second chance. He gave us a second chance. Even though Adam messed it up for everybody, Jesus came and he fixed it so we could be saved. Hallelujah. That was our second chance. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he gave us another chance. Hallelujah. We can rejoice on this day. God bless you. And until the next time, have a wonderful day. We love you. Bye-bye.